Hi, I'm Anton Chitty of VPG Micromeasurements. I'm a European product manager. And today we're going to look at pre-leading a gauge. So I've got a standard strain gauge here, which is one of our CEA series gauges. And you can see here, it's our CEA 13 250UWA 350, a very common gauge that you'll find um, all over the world. Uh, we use it extensively on our workshop program as well. So I've taken one of the gauges from this pack and you can see that just here. I've got the tools available to me. So I have a clean pair of tweezers. I've got some materials for cleanup, both cotton buds and gauzes. I've got some drafting tape to restrict solder flow. I have my solder, 361A20R. I have a bottle of rosin solvent for cleaning up the solder flux residue. And I've got my neutralizer 5A for cleaning up the back of the gauge to make sure it's completely clean. So all we need to do is to take our gauge and remove it from the acetate using our clean tweezers, and I'm going to place it onto a pre-cleaned aluminium plate. And then I'm going to use my drafting tape to mask off approximately half of the sold terminal. So there we have about half being showed there. Okay, I'm going to take one of the cotton buds and I'm going to smooth off the tape to make sure no solder can flow up the gauge there. I've got my Mark 10 soldering station to my right as well and it's all ready prepared, ready to go. So I'm going to take my solder and my soldering iron and I'm going to put a little bit of solder onto the soldering iron tip and I'm going to press that firmly onto the gauge for one second and tin each of the two terminals. Now I've got my pre-prepared lead wire here. What I'm going to do is take another piece of drafting tape and use this to hold the wire in place. I'm going to place the tape over the end of the lead wire and create a little curve to bias it down. And then I'm going to position this in the right place so that I can get those wires positioned very precisely. I'm just going to use my tweezers to push over the red very slightly to make sure it's in exactly the right position. And then once again I'm going to go in with my soldering iron, a little bit of solder on the soldering iron, and using one second again I'm going to reflow each of those two solder joints to capture the wire in there. That's essentially the job done. So all I need to do now is clean it up. And firstly, I'm going to take a brush full of rosin solvent and remove the flux residue and the tape. So the flux cleaner will remove the tape very, very easily. And the same with the tape here as well. Just being careful that the gauge doesn't lift off the surface too far as I do this. And once that's done, I can then take another brush full of rosin solvent and give the gauge a really thorough clean, making sure to get the brush in and amongst the solder joints there and around the lead wire. Really thorough, thorough clean. And once I've done that, of course, this is a very volatile product, so I need to blot dry. So I take a clean gauze and carefully blot the gauge dry. And then I'm going to turn it over and blot the back of the gauge as well. So there's no rosin solvent there at all. Next stage is to make sure it's neutralized as well. So it's completely clean. So I'm going to take one or two drops of neutralizer onto my cotton, clean cotton bud here, and one or two drops. And I'm going to expose the back of the gauge and I'm going to very carefully wipe the back of the gauge and gently rotate the cotton bud as I do it. So I present a clean piece of the cotton bud to the gauge each time I do that. That goes straight in the bin and then another clean dry cotton bud this time just to make sure that's completely dry. So you can see there, there's absolutely no damage from the solder heat and that the solder pads are all nicely 
and cleaned up and ready to bond onto my structure if I need to. Alternatively, I can take the acetate that I took the gauge from and I can place the gauge back into the acetate, ready to store it. So I can now transfer this to site if I need to. Um, or put it, even put it back in a pack to hold it safe, ready for when I go on site. The beauty of doing this kind of pre-leading is that you can customise the lead wire. I've used 330 DFE in this case, but you can use Teflon lead wire or solid copper wire if you have a specific requirement. So for higher temperatures or more convenient applications, you can customise this pre-leading. And it's very quick and easy to do under a nice workbench with decent lighting, that can really help.